go, I'll keep going, keep going. Um, she recently graduated from the University of Central Florida, studied finance. Go Knights, go Knights, go Knights. Go Knights. Go Knights. Um, but if there's any investment bankers speaking uh, or seeing this, uh, I know my DCFs and my comparable analysis and precedent transactions. Uh, looking for full-time roles currently. Spoilers, if for people who haven't seen it, you know. Uh, <laughs> who is Samuel L. Jackson? Who's Samuel L. Jackson? Well, which character was he? Purple. Mace Windy. Monster Windy, right? Mace Windy. So when Anakin. You know, the funny thing is like, he created that whole like character on himself. Like, yeah. He wasn't even supposed to have a purple lightsaber, but like he talked to uh, George, Lucas? George Lucas and he's like, can I get a purple lightsaber? He gave it to him. And he gave it to him. And then they just created a whole lore about it. And I'm like, oh, because he has a purple lightsaber, he's the only one that is able to wield the light and the dark side, you know, channel both of them. That's why he's like the second most powerful be behind like Yoda. And it's just because he just wanted to have a purple lightsaber. George Lucas think, why not? There was like no actual reason, like logical reasoning behind it. And then after they did it, I guess then they just kind of like made it into canon, like what the whole purple thing was behind it. But so they just made it because it was there. They yeah, just, it was and it's for Samuel Jackson. You know, he was like, I remember reading, seeing like a uh, YouTube short. I stay off TikTok. So if I say like YouTube shorts, it's because I stay off TikTok. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he was just like, yeah, obviously, like I, I got the role and I was just hoping to be like a stormtrooper. And then until they started handing me all these robes and Jedi uh, lightsabers, and then like, oh shoot, I get to pick my own lightsaber. Like, oh shoot, I'm talking to Yoda. And uh, that's how the whole thing started. But, anyways, you watched Pop Team and Mace okay. Windu. I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? It goes four, five, six, one, two, three? Yeah. So and I, that's how they, they came out, yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure I've watched four, five, one, two. I, I messed it up. I'm sorry. I messed it up. Oh, no. I messed it up. And so the reason why, I'm not going to lie to you. Sorry to all the Star Wars fans out there. I thought Star Wars was the corniest for the longest time. Because I, I wasn't able to watch it. I just, I just, I wasn't able to watch it. I was not able to watch it until a really good friend of mine that actually is the biggest Steelers fan that I know sat me down in a Mexican restaurant where we're already eating tacos and she actually told me all about, you know, the Star Wars lore. Yeah. And I started to put all the pieces together from the actual memes. To me, they were memes until okay. I watched those movies and they hit so much harder. And I had so much more respect for George Lucas, obviously. The little details. Like the one that stuck out to me the most, and I get so upset thinking about it. Because you know when, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. Anakin is talking to Padme in a garden where he tells her, oh. I can't breathe without you. Mm -hmm. He tells her that, ready? When it gets to the scene where he's fighting is it Obi-Wan? Yeah. Okay. After that, when he becomes Darth Vader, that's why he's breathing like that. He literally can't breathe without Padme because she died. And that blew my mind. Just that little cinematic detail. I was like, wow. Just like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, whole, that's his entire character is Darth Vader. He can't breathe. I mean, I think that's just a coincidence, though. He just really can't breathe, though, because he I know. got... I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. He, he got whooped yeah. by Obi Wan. Just like that detail to me meant a lot cinematically, mm -hmm. knowing how it's like written, you know, knowing how you kind of have to write those things in there. Um, yeah. I think the other one was watching him grow as from a kid, you know, being a slave with the mom. Yeah. And then him being known to be like the strongest. From, yeah, like, he was the chosen one. Like it was like the reading or something that he had. Oh, he was had like the highest uh, mitochondrion, whatever, like cells, mm -hmm. which then I kind of meant that if you had a high level count, meant that you were like had a deeper connection with the force, mm -hmm. meaning you know you were able to be like a stronger Jedi individual, something like that. Yeah, if you had the opportunity, if you were like in that franchise, what side are you choosing? Uh, 
I mean, I feel like obviously you want to go the, the light, but like the, the dark just has fucking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Also, I think you should preface, he keeps looking down, I think you should preface that there's a dog there because he looks a little bit like depressed lately. Oh, keep going. Oh. <laughs> so just preface that you have your dog there. Yeah, okay. Um. Take two. And action, okay. Um, the light or dark side? What do, you, what do you think, Bubba? Um, yeah, like the dark side, like, you know, typically they, they mention how the characters are always, like, they're just crazy, like, they're not there, and hence why, like, the, the Whoa, more... What do, you, what do you mean by that? Like, typically, like, like if you go to, like, other, like, Sith Lords, like Palpatine, you look at Darth uh, Plagueis, Darth, uh, you know, Darth Sidious, Palpatine, whatever, um, Darth Ty Tyrannus, like, they all kind of get into a... In their head, as in like they're not like they're they're mentally like crazy, like psychotic in a way. And it, the more psychotic you become with the dark force, the more powerful you become. Um, like think of like the Anakin, for example. He literally slaughtered kids. That was horrible. That's horrific. And that's how you knew, like, the younglings? yeah, the younglings and <laughs> all those memes. They're like, oh, you know. Thankfully, he's on our side. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 He's, he's like, I remember like finding that out because, of course, you know, on iPhone you could go on the little images and send the gifts. You see a lot of different things when you type in like Anakin, like yeah. when he either turns or the cloak, where he's like doing that mad face. But just there's one where he has the, the lightsaber and the kid is like looking at him. Yeah. I didn't know he actually killed the kid. No, yeah. Like I, oh, bro. But like. I think I'm starting to understand more, you know, of the lore itself, yeah. and I am excited to watch it in order. I, I just, I have not... Have you not watched that at all? I have. But, like, in order? I, I mean, mean, I mean, you don't have to watch it in, in, in order anymore, but, like, I guess just kind of, like, put in the pieces of the ones that you haven't seen. What do you think the best way to watch it is? For someone who has watched, like, enough of it, how do I actually still experience it the best way? Right. Yeah, just like I guess like the OG like trilogy with like four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, and then anything yeah. after that? I mean, seven, eight, nine. There, it's just there was a huge like uh, roller coaster. Um, different stories that just didn't line up. Like Disney took over, and it just wasn't the same. Like apparently, they had two different directors. One director for the seventh movie. Didn't like where it was going, fired, I think, uh, I can't remember, it was James Gunner, one there. That's gonna be embarrassing. Yeah. No, that's, um, that's dangerous though. Obviously, I know about that side, because I'm like the yeah. film person, you know? No, I'm just saying embar embarrassing in the, in the way of, I don't know the directors, yeah, like, you're good. or Jake, it was one of them. But anyways, <laughs> um, they fired him, brought on someone else, eighth movie sucked, and then they Jeez. decided how like, oh, maybe we should go back to the seventh movie, but like, he already kind of like built like a script on like something he wanted to build up for the next, you know, eighth and ninth movie. But since they fired him, this other guy who came for they the eighth, him? yeah, like for the seventh movie, brought this other guy in and tried to switch it up. And then they fired him, this guy, at, at the end of the eighth, because it was also a disaster. They brought in the guy from the seventh movie back to do the ninth. And since the eighth guy had currently like moved the script around from his original idea, it was just all a mess. And just how I'm saying it now, imagine how it played out in the movies. Just right. made zero sense. Do well, two things. Because yeah. right now you're a bigger fan than I am. I know after I actually understand everything, I'll probably appreciate it so much more. But knowing, you know, how the original story could have been, if you could rank those, I think it's 79, in order from best to worst just just put? seven eight nine just seven eight nine. Ooh, i haven't seen them in a while i i could oh the last one was just terrible did i keep okay I okay so nine's probably like the the least i guess mm -hmm. it's and they're all just so forgettable dang that was a bad yeah they're that bad and my, my thing is growing up i remember like watching the third one uh revenge of the sith like i think that's 
every uh, millennial, not millennial, generation Z's favorite movie if you're a fan of Star Wars. You know, watching like you know, Anakin and, and Obi Wan. You know, start from the beginning as good friends, then you know to their battle. Like I, I remember everything from that movie, like from the beginning to the end. Like you know, for the most part, maybe say like ninety percent of it. As opposed to the last ones, like it was just no value rewatching it. But I think the seventh one had good potential, had a a great cast, I think, and had a great direction. And the story actually was pretty interesting. And then maybe, so I'd say maybe that's like the top one, and then maybe eighth. Forgettable as well. And then nine, uh, with the whole Kylo Ren and, um, shoot, I even forgot the, the, the oh, Ray. Uh, they had like a whole love thing. Like it was just not necessary, oh. Ray. That was, the character, she was like the main character for like the, the trilogy. She was Palpatine's like granddaughter or something. What? I don't know. Hold on. Cause like. Oh no, I think it was just, it was like a theory. I, you see, that's my whole thing though. Like I watched the movie kind of long ago, but they're just so forgettable. But she mastered like the force in like a year or two when like Luke and Anakin took forever. It took them like from like five years old till he was like 18, 19 years old. Luke, who was a farmer boy and what was that thing was Tatooine and then for the next trilogy or the next two movies he was then maybe like what was it, like two four five six years but then he learned from like Yoda who was like the grandmaster but then like Ray just learned it in a like in such a short period of time it just made no sense and then she was able to like go up against like Palpatine and and Kylo Ren, who had years of experience, just made zero sense. So she, is she, what do you know for sure? Is she probably team Grand Not, not looking back at it, I'm not quite too sure. I, I can't remember. Um, it's just, I have to rewatch the movie. Okay. But I gotta watch just, all of yeah, it anyway. Now, now, <laughs> we, now we have to watch it, just, watch just to watch it. I'm but like, as a kid, Yoda, it didn't like creep me out. I think it was just like, because Pixie was short, you know, of course that gives like the little cute cuddly aspect, but the fact that he had that little raspy voice and he was always just like, so slow, and it, it, it scared me as a kid. As a kid, I was terrified of animatronics. So oh. whenever I would be at like Disney World or stuff, anything that would have that, you know, freaking, I would, I would not want to be close. Oh, but like in the movie four, five, six, you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, because in the, he comes out in the one, two, three. Yeah, the CGI. But he, he, yeah, in the CGI, and it's a lot more like fluid, and it actually looks the better. Older ones are. I'll give you a funny example, and then I got a different question. The really old King Kong, like the black and white ones, where like they kind of made, I don't know if it was claymation, or I don't know how they did it, but just the way that King Kong looked in the black and white one terrified me. Oh, yeah. Terrified. Just the way that it looks. Oh, Same gotta, with animation. Gotta pull it up. I, I, I've never seen it. Hey, bro. It, it, it didn't scar me, but I just, there's something with the way that it moves really didn't sit right with me. Same mm -hmm. with claymation. Something with claymation, depending on, like, what the movie is. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it, it's kind of, it's weird to me a little. It's weird. Yeah, no, I, I, I've never seen really been into the King Kong movie. I mean, recently I've seen like the, the, the newer releases like King Kong vs. Godzilla, uh, King Kong Skull Island, and then like the, the standalone for Godzilla and uh, uh, the one where he fights like the other beasts. <laughs> I forgot that. It that, the, the goes movie. into Godzilla and Godzilla. Skull Island and Skull Island. And what was the one with God, Godzilla where he, he fights like the three-headed dragon, that mm -hmm. one. Um, that was actually a good movie, I just can't remember the title of it. Oh my God. Do you have a favorite movie? Um, a favorite movie? Hmm. I feel like I always have like a backup to this question. Uh, I'm trying to think some off the top of my head. I mean, I think Whiplash is a great movie. That's a great movie. You seen that one? It's a great movie. Yeah. I think I think I've only seen it once because I I want time in between to watch it again. Yeah. Because at first 
I was trying to figure out how is this kid gonna come back? Cause that teacher, if you were in his position, if JT Simmons is a great actor. If you were in his position, yeah, would you have gone back? If in this, if I'm in his position, yes, one hundred percent. Really? Wait, go back and in, in what sense? What part of the movie? The very end. I think the only thing that I can remember right now is like the dinner scene when he, the dinner scene where right towards the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, and when he, he like he sees them performing because he got him expelled from the school. Yeah, he came right back. Like he's just going into the performance and performing and showed yeah. that he was always the one for the part. Yeah. Would you have gone back? I mean, if you already knew the whole thing, yeah, no, for sure. Like he, that's his passion. Like he already knew he wanted to prove him wrong. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, if he, I feel like in, in general in life, if you have like such a passion for anything, then you should go ahead and pursue it. You know, he knew he wanted to go for this 100% and was, you know, head down and really dedicated. And he, did, he thought it would be best, you know, like just to split up with a girl to go then like fully pursue his passion and spend countless of hours. Like his hand would even bleed mm-hmm. from, you know, dr- you know, banging the, the sticks on the drums for so long. I didn't even know that was even possible. And then he didn't even show up to practice, you know, all band-aids wrapped and it's just like, well at that point, towards the end of the movie, you already know what you have to do. Just mm-hmm. go out there, show that you're the best and you know what this guy was missing out. And that's it. And if he doesn't like it, you know, you went out there and you could, you know, leave with your head, you know, high. And like, what's the worst that could happen if you, you know, you did it, you know, and I have no regrets. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely go back and, and, and do it. But he was sweating. I remember he was like banging on it and yeah. you could watch all the like. Sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that was insane. You know, he used to play the drums. Yeah. He used to play the drums, the piano. Did I play anything else? You still play? I Can like, you still play? Bro, actually, I'm thinking about it now. Middle school, I used to play the clarinet. I used to play the ukulele. I learned how to play a little guitar. I did a lot. And then, like, this is all middle school. Yeah. The piano? Well, I think I already said that. Piano and drums. But, well, that's already more than what I could do. Gee, I forgot. But that, that, that is that. definitely my intro to music. So that's what I also did while I was playing. Did you did you ever play soccer? I did. I did. I, I played for, at a very young age. Um, played in until Miami? yeah, Miami. Just uh, played until high school, and that was the end of my my soccer career. <laughs> Same, actually. Here, here to yeah. the. Where did you go to high school? Uh, over by West Kendo in Miami. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a small. Well, I guess like a, a suburban area or outside of like downtown Miami. Um, yeah, I played there just until my senior year and still didn't know if I really even wanted to go to college or, you know, didn't have anything going on like that. And, um, you know, then I just kind of went on and just always played like recreation with some friends and whatnot and what I decided to do and what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Yeah, I knew that because I had a a couple of friends down at Fort Lauderdale and I think one of them lived over in Kendall. And they used they actually played for like Kendall Academy or just like one of the teams. That's not, yeah, that sounds familiar. And like they watching them play, they're like very aggressive. Nothing wrong with that at all. I just remember the game itself, like the refs let them play. Like you could oh, yeah. have a crazy hard slide tackle. And of oh, course, yeah. you know, the fans and the parents, ah! but like the ref yeah. doesn't even do anything. That's no, just, yeah, like, that's just the style down there. It's it's very aggressive. Uh, but I mean, that's just, I feel like you find that a lot in the amateur level too as well. And like, it's just how it is then down there. And it's just, I think it's just like the breed that Miami kind of brings. It's just a lot of like Hispanics. And in, in the, that kind of game, it just brings out a lot of aggressiveness. Not so much like the technicality of the, the game that you see in like European, you know, football. But um, in Miami, it's... You know, you get people from everywhere, like, you know, you get like Argentinians, the, Bra- the, the Brazilians, Colombians, or um, Mexicans, anywhere from, you know, South, Southern and uh, Central America, and it just breeds a lot of, like, physicality. And, mm-hmm. you know, here and there you'll see some really nice, like, skills and, and techers, but not so much in what, you, what you see in, in the, the Europe level. Yeah, shoot. When but, did you become a Chelsea fan? A Chelsea fan. 
Do you remember like when you maybe just started? Long yeah, no, for sure. I remember, you know, growing up and uh, Eden Hazard was the one that uh, made me fall in love with, with the team. And even he was just, uh, he was a menace. He was a top class bowler. I wish he would have stayed, but um, the team was with uh, Jose Mourinho. It was just straight diabolical in a good way. You know, you had William when he still had his legs. I forgot about him. Oscar. Uh, and then you had a striker who was, oh, Diego Costa. And then you still had Cesc Fabregas playing as the five, as a deep line playmaker. Diego Costa used to piss me off, boy. No, nah, he was piss good, me off. though. He, he, he was. He could get the job done. It's what, honestly, what they're missing now. I Someone think, who's just reliable in front of goal. Something that we look, we lack so much right now. But then, uh, who was playing next to him? Oh, uh, Nemanja Matic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you still had men. Like, and I think about like Bran Branislav Ivanovic. Okay. And then you had Petr Cech in goal. Or oh, Thibaut yeah. Courtois. That was when like Courtois. he was still there. Um, and then left back was Golden FIFA for real. I'm thinking about Ashley Cole. My God. Well, he was still like transition. Who was left? Oh, well, I th I'm thinking of Felipe Luis, but no, he he was there for a season. Went back to Atlético Madrid. Marcos Alonso was there for a bit. Marcos Alonso. And I remember like here and there, uh, somewhere between that was John also Terry. Ricardo Conte. Yeah, John Terry, John, John Terry was there. But he was a center back. John Terry, Gary Cahill, David Luiz, all center backs. Thinking about like a more established left back during the transitioning period. I can't think of anyone that comes to mind. But maybe, who was it? I don't think they had like top class name, yeah. like a household name. That's what you're saying. Like, I remember it was like Ashley Cole and then maybe like someone they just kind of always like rotated but never really like had that full yeah. established. I can think of David Luiz, but I know he was center back. Yeah, center back. Mm -hmm. And obviously then like Antonio Conte came and you had like Victor Moses, like <laughs> when he had like the three five two, running through the flanks and then he had Victor Moses who was always like loan after loan after loan and then one, you know, he finally finished one of his recent loans, came back and Antonio Conte just made him into such a promising like star that he was like a uh, established like first team player every, every game. Mm. And then the left wing back, which was Felipe Luiz or Marcos Alonso, players that no one had ever heard of and just made them into like established like players. Yeah, yeah. players in the, into the team. Um, and, and that three, who, who was it? I'm thinking of, uh, you know, it was John Terry, Cahill, and wait, I'm thinking Luiz was there. He probably was. Um, but yeah, back to the whole question like, why I fell in love with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just and like Eddie Hazard, and then. He was there like that whole like the threat. Yeah, the whole period there, and they you know were actually uh, a threat to the Premier League, and and uh, would always you know finish top four, top three, or go for Premier League. Those were the good days. <laughs> the good days. The good days. Hell yeah. Okay, so we got eleven. We got starting eleven for Chelsea. Look, it's just. They're from their game uh, at Crystal Palace, where they tied 1-1. Mm -hmm. um, who would you replace from here? Who would I replace? Yeah, or what do you think of the overall? So first, I'm going to keep Palmer easily keeping in there. I'm going to keep Enzo in there. Man, Dwight has been killing it so far, in my killed opinion. He killed it, but ghosted in this game. I know it's a game, and, and honestly, yeah. From being a Chelsea fan for a long time, knowing that we also don't do, like as a club, I don't know if it's just like a stigma or it's just, maybe it's like a mental soccer thing in general. When we go against clubs that we feel as if we're gonna destroy, or we feel as if already having a chance, the level of play already drops before the game starts. For yeah. some reason, that always happens. So it's not much of a surprise. It's more of like a nail biter before the game even starts. So when I hear we're gonna play certain teams, even, we'll just say like Wolf, Wolfhampton. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but yeah, Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton. Like they'll be, you know, when you see the logo, you know the team where it's like that team doesn't sound as scary. If it's not a Man City, Liverpool, 
um, United, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Maybe you freaking Newcastle now, but just like there's certain Arsenal. I hate Arsenal, but there's just certain teams that you know. That you're like, oh, if I miss this game, I shouldn't worry about it because they're just gonna beat them anyway. Then you find out Crystal Palace. Oh, and the craziest thing Crystal is that they Palace. sold their best player too to Bayern Munich, Michael Lise. He that left to too, Bayern Munich. They're always trading. <gasps> You know, I just realized. I remember, I would even talk about it. Sterling. Oh yeah. He's gone. He left on loan to Arsenal, which I don't want him at the club though. Really? Why not? Why not? I think he's a selfish player. Dang. Like I prefer having Madueke and you know, the whole like thing is they need a leader in the club. I mean, in the, in the locker room. And I don't think he fits that bill. Like they lost, they need like a Thiago Silva, or like a John Terry, because like everyone here is under 25 from top to bottom. Jackson, Palmer, Madueke, Neto, and so, yeah, they're all under 25. Sterling is like 28, 29. That's true. And he left Manchester City because Pep Guardiola didn't want him. He had a bad attitude. Mm. And watching since a kid. I always felt like the players that we should have held on to, we always gave away the wrong times. And the players that we need to get rid of, we always kept. Yeah. And I so mean, it was just like and I, and I get that. And I remember seeing like uh, another video where they were asking John Terry, like, hey, like, do you feel a little bit tough? Or do you feel some sort of regret on being a little bit too tough on Mohamed Salah, Kevin De Bruyne, or Romelu Lukaku when they were still young and they were at the academy? Because you know, as we all know, like they're now going on to like create like legacies at their respective clubs. But then again, you compare to the players that were there, you know, already established in the team, and it was like William, and it was uh, Oscar, Juan Mata, Mata and was they just weren't gonna take over those spots from mm. one day to the next, and they wanted playing time. And I think it was just the best thing in the, their moment in the career. Um, and they were going to get the playing time that they needed to develop into the players there are today. So a lot of people, I guess, judge them a little bit too harshly on, oh, we should have given him a little bit more time. Yes, no matter the fact is Chelsea was chasing Premier League titles, Champions League, Champions League titles. But if they had stayed, they wouldn't have gotten the game development they needed for their career. And they wouldn't be the players they are now today. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's one way to look about it. So would you say now, I guess looking at the board, honestly, as of right now, since he, they're all under 26, 25. Yeah. It's more of a uh, developmental team, would you say? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That's as, scary. Just as a fan, like, you to, to understand that and to still, you know, respect, it's the best for their careers right now, you know, they're changing their, I changing think, them into young men, you know, obviously yeah. to do better with wherever they go off to. It is not the most fun thing to watch if you're losing. <laughs> you know, it's just, ah, bam. I think, Hilarious enough that I'm thinking about it right now. There's a guy that's on TikTok that actually has like the Spider-Man suit and he's always on TikTok live, just doing yeah. the Miles Morales, I guess, I don't know, the thing. He's just always talking in character all the time. Oh, really? He would be a perfect fit just because people know him as like Miles Morales right now. Hmm, that's probably not a he bad marketing scheme. He would be. Or the guy that actually plays the actual Mon Morales in this into the Spider Verse. Yeah. He deserves that part. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I have to like I mean, so far with all the previous three, you know, castings of Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield and Toby Maguire have all been spot on. I think it's a tragedy that Andrew Garfield couldn't finish his trilogy. You know, they sure. kind of just left it off on a huge cliffhanger. And you know, there was even rumors circling how like even after Homecoming with Tom Holland that they were gonna go back and like finish him. Um, who knows if that still is in the works or something, but you know, I'd, I'd love to see that. And maybe like, maybe uh, Miles Morales live action. And you know, I'm still waiting for that uh, anime version to, to finish mm -hmm. because they left that one on a huge cliffhanger as well. And, you know, at the time of this recording, you know, still no release date has been announced yet and still I'm, I'm very much anticipating that.